what is persistence on Linux? What does this mean? As I started to dive into this a little bit, I started to realize that one of the big problems is there's not a clear cut exact definition. So a lot of ideas get thrown around without really considering what persistence actually is. So I want to try and explain and clarify some of this in this video today. Thanks for checking out another Switch to Linux video. And as we had already talked about today, we're going to have a little discussion on persistence. And persistence, of course, as the general envelope term would basically mean is we have a USB drive, we have a Linux distribution, and we have the ability to access files on that drive on a reboot. Now, the problem is, is this can, this can take several different forms. It can take several different approaches. There's a few different ways of doing things. And I make the distinction between a persistence, something like Tails does, and actually installing something to a USB drive because, yes, that is actually a thing. You can completely install Linux to a USB drive, completely run it exactly as if it were installed to the internal drives on a on a system. Do I consider that persistence? I really don't. I just consider that running Linux on a USB drive. Whereas persistence carries with it a little bit more of an element of a live key with the ability to retrieve some data. Now, as we dove into looking at this, this came from my recent video. Of course, Tales 6.0 is coming out. In fact, it should be out tomorrow based on when this video is released. Uh, but this was the brief look at the uh, release candidate for Tales 6.0, and I get this comment. I don't really understand how the persistent storage works. Can I have a 32 gigabyte USB separated into 16 gig, 16 gigs with Tails on partition one and free storage on partition two? Not even sure if USBs can be partitioned like disk drives. Um, and he says, but that's what I, he, he wants there. So first and foremost, in Tails, if you're looking for the truest, best definition of persistence, meaning we have a live key which refreshes itself every single time, but then we have the ability to retrieve data and even settings and some software, Tails is absolutely the best place to go. It's designed for this. So uh, to Death Tomb. We do talk a little bit in that video about persistence. I have previous videos talking about it a little bit more in focus, but Tails itself is specifically built to function on persistence because it needs to keep itself as clear as it can, but at the same time, it wants to have the ability to keep storage and emails and things like that. So Tails itself has a tool to go into persistence and it automatically does uh, does the uh, the partitioning and everything else. And theirs is mapped specifically. So you can not only save documents, you can also save wireless passwords, bookmarks, and other things that you can do as well. You can install new software and run that on persistent software and things like the such. So I did want to dig a little bit deeper into this though and look in more detail about how exactly the uh, Tails was going to provision itself. So I have a couple of different Tails builds. I have my one which gets, gets used for basic testing. I test upgrades on this to make sure nothing goes wonky. This is an eight gigabyte USB drive. I have a bigger one which is a uh, 60, uh, 64 gigabyte drive, I think. So what I wanted to know is when we boot this up and create the persistent storage, what is going to happen to the drive? So I went in and did several screenshots looking at both of these Tails installs compared to two completely different computers because I wanted to see how is Tails operating and provisioning itself as far as the memory versus how is the, um, uh, how is the, the USB doing that. And so what we did here is I had a look at a couple of different Tails instances. So what I did here is I took two different drives with Tails, one being eight gigabytes and the other being 64 gigabytes. And then I booted this onto two separate computers. One of these is a Dell Inspirian 3505 with 16 gigs of memory and um, uh, a Ryzen 3550U. The other computer that I used was a 
uh, Dell Inspirion uh, 7548 with a core i5 with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And then I wanted to have a look at these two tails under these two instances. We wanted to look at the disk partitioning and we wanted to look at the available download space when you are live. So when you are using a computer with 16 gigs of RAM on an 8 gigabyte drive, it takes half of the drive for the tail system, uses the other half of the drive to partition the persistent storage and so you see that you only have four gigabytes of available persistence on a four gigabyte uh, available um, a live key and we have eight gigabytes of downloadable space because it uses roughly half of the available memory for the available space to access the Tor browser and the other half to run the operating system itself. So you take the same gigabyte drive. Again, the partitioning is exactly the same because the, t the partitioning of the disk is independent on the computer being used. But when we boot this guy up and have a look at the available memory, you'll see that it only has four gigabytes to the Ryzen computers, seven gigabytes, owing to the fact that the memory is half the size in this particular system. So then what we did is we took the 64 gig, let's run the 64 gig inside of the, uh, the i5, and you'll see that the partitioning now gives 8 gigabytes of available space to the live key, and then the remaining goes into the persistent storage with... Now you can see that the downloadable space is exactly the same because that is dependent on the available memory. And looking at the 64 gig system, the uh, again, the partitioning is agnostic to the computer you're being used, 8.6 gigs with 53 as the uh, persistent drive and 7 gigabytes of available space over here. Now, some might look at looking at the memory amounts, looking at how they're differing a little bit from disk drive to drive. This is most likely the difference that one of these, the 8 gigabyte drive is running the uh, the uh, 6.0 release candidate and the 64 drive is running something in the 5X series, probably 5X22, 5X23, whatever is the most recent download is probably what that one is. And so that is how your Tails is partitioning itself. And this is why I prefer the, uh, why I prefer your Tails if you're trying to do something in persistence, because that is what it is designed for, hands down. So if you're going to be looking for something to do in persistence, then this is how you want to pull it off. And hopefully this clarifies this question. Basically, if you have a 32 gig drive, you're likely going to have eight gigabytes being used up with tails and the remaining going on persistence. And then utilizing that persistence, you can use that to store all sorts of other settings. And within tails, that also means the Wi-Fi passwords, any extra software you're trying to install, and a number of other settings inside of your system. So hopefully that answers that. But this digs a little bit deeper because other people are always asking about live persistence. So this was a Reddit post from two years ago. People asking for a good distro for a persistent live USB. He says he always wants to have with him a persistent live USB because it can be useful at times. And for him, he says it'd be useful having his own Linux with him. So if wherever he's at, he might be able to boot into it and have access to all of his particular files. And he wants to have the ability to have a somewhat stable system. He does mention here he tried Lubuntu. He tried Zubuntu. And uh, th these worked for a little bit, but eventually messed up like many Linux distributions do. And I will note that if you run a Linux distribution as a regular Linux distribution on a USB drive, it does have a half-life. And so I found uh, that some of the drives that I was doing my initial testing on, they became unstable over time because USB flash drives have limited rewrite cycles. So what I actually do with this, uh, just as a small aside, my MX or not my MX, uh, my Manjaro Raspberry Pi, I have been running the same operating system for about four years now, 
but I change the drive every year so that I don't have corruption in the system. What I do is once a year, I'll pick up a new drive and I will simply clone the old drive onto the new drive and boot off of the new drive, verifying that everything works. And then I'll save the old one in case something goes wrong or wonky or whatever else. I can always go back into that. But this way, I always have a good copy of my working production web design computer based on a Raspberry Pi. Utilizing the same methodology, we're just using uh, SD cards. I found Raspberry Pis still boot better off of SD cards than USB drives for whatever reason. Uh, but that being said, that is what your approach is. If you do have a good live persistent methodology, you want to clone that USB drive from one drive to another once a year at least just to make sure that the drive doesn't ultimately fail because that's what happens on USB drives. But it digs a little bit deeper because he's kind of asking which drives to use. I would always use Tails because it's designed explicitly for this with a lot of other options. But there are some other options out there. Uh, from a make use of article published a uh, little uh, less than a year ago, nine best USB uh, live USB distros you can use on the go. These aren't specifically uh, related to um, uh, to persistence, but uh, Puppy Linux specifically does have a way that you can install it as a persistent on a USB drive to be bootable in that setting. So that makes a good viable option. Kali Linux is more used for pen testing. It's not an all-purpose distribution, so I'm not sure I'd, you know, it, while it does have that for that purpose, <laughs> it's kind of how you do pen testing sometimes, then uh, obviously it does have that option, but it's not the best distribution if you're simply trying to have a all pur general purpose use. Here's a Porteous Linux. This is one I don't actually know a lot about. MX Linux, of course. I do use MX Linux on my writing computer. This is nice because it has a tool where you can boot up MX Linux into the ISO. You can make whatever changes you want, install extra software, do a bunch of things, and then you can take all of those changes that you did on the live key and you can save them onto a separate ISO that you burn and then you can now boot off of that. Again, utilizing the remaining space as a persistent drive, MX Linux might be one of the easiest ways to put together a general purpose system that's you know not perpetually on, on the Tor network and has the security protocols that Tails has, but it's going to be a little bit more, uh, more robust and a little, going to feel a lot more comfortable for more people. So MX Linux might be a good way to go. Parrot also is used for pen testing, so probably not your best overall bet. And, uh, Linux Lite is really nice because they actually have in their documents, they actually have a guide in their manual on how to create USB persistence. And this uses the MKUSB package. This is one I'm going to have a look at the MKUSB package in a future video. I want to see how well it works and what exactly the result happens to be. Uh, because this is interesting to me, but uh, the purpose of this video is just to mention it briefly where you can get it, what you can do with it. This apparently allows you to take any ISO image and install it onto a USB drive with some degree of persistence. I don't know 100% sure, and I can't find a ton of extra information other than tutorials that all repeat the same things how to do. So, hey, I'll just go ahead and add my own to the mix. <laughs> but... Over here, it talks about you just install the uh, Make USB repository. You want to run it, verify that you are administrator, and then you go ahead and you install this. Now, they're using this with Linux Lite. You can use this with any live key bootable USB drive. Here they say MS-DOS, but this is going to be dependent. Are you booting off of old but legacy BIOS MS-DOS or the newer UEFI, uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> UEFI system, in which case you do the UEFI system there. And then you separate how much you want for persistence, how much you want for regular. So this looks like a, a good viable system, and I want to look into that a little bit further. Of course, you can grab the uh, tarball of the latest version, which is 23.2, four months ago. And if you need to install it now, this is really designed to use on Ubuntu derivative systems. But it will work on Debian, although it's not as uh, it's not as easy to use. But it talks here about how to add it to the sources list, installing it, and the last guide I think was updated. Um, let's see, I think the guide was last updated under um, uh, 
uh, under bullseye. So you'll see that bookworm is not in the list. So not sure if that'll completely work under uh, bookworm at this point in time. But that is certainly an option as well. Linux Lite would be one. Obviously, we talked about Tails. And Elementary OS, I have no idea what in the world someone was smoking when they added this to the list because Elementary OS, it barely works on when you install it, let alone try to run on a persistent USB key. It's not what it's designed for, really. And then uh, Slacks, again, another one. I don't know much about that particular um, Linux distribution. Although that might be another fun one as well. Uh, so it comes with two builds, Debian and Slackware. And so it's also one of the few that supports 32-bit. So, hey, that might be a neat one to look into as well. So those are kind of what your options are and hopefully clarifying some of the, uh, some of the discussion around the persistence. So... I personally define persistence as having an attachment onto the USB drive, allowing you to store some files onto an otherwise live, C uh, live CD because you don't really want a lot of your system uh, files to change. The downsides of that is it's not as easy to install extra software or things like that. That's where MX Linux comes into play, where you can make those changes and then push that onto a new ISO. And so you can have your own customized system. And I do want to look at the uh, MKUSB application in a future video to see what type of neat results that gets us to see how viable is that as a good viable solution. So hopefully that clarified some of the questions about it and also addressed some of the, uh, the early question and the comment about tails and persistence and how to work with that. Overall, I stand by it. Uh, if you're doing something like this, persistence entails is just so much better it's what it's designed for they have whole guides on it and their level of persistence is so much better than you're going to get on most other systems so with that hopefully that has been a helpful video for you to discuss uh, persistence on uh, on a linux distribution and with that thank you for watching and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux